Good evening. Welcome to United FM Radio, In My Opinion. I'm Eric, and hopefully Dennis said he was going to call today, and he'll spend some time on the phone. Uh, if you want to call in, it's 860-626-5193. And Dennis had his second surgery um, earlier I think three or four days ago, so he should be, he said he was going home. And now Mike had his second surgery today. So they're playing around with, typical, with, unfortunately, with diabetics and having to have um, body parts amputated. They start with the toes, go to the midfoot, then take the whole foot, go up to the ankle, then eventually to the knee. It's, it's not a fun thing to do. So. Mike is recuperating well. I've heard him on calling into uh, a different radio uh, talk show, so it's he seems to be doing okay. Um, I think we're going to be going through a lot of um, talk on the Black Lives Matter situation, and which everybody is talking about. To me, they've lost all of their validity because they've uh, committed so many crimes. They're violent looting, defacing, they lose it all. And they get arrested if you're in New York City and they let you right out again. So you're talking about a lot of criminals, a lot of low lives here. And if you heard other uh, talk shows, they're calling them a lot worse than what I'm calling them right now. What they've done in Seattle is disgusting. The Seattle police cannot go in. Oh, and by the way, have you heard there was a shooting within that area called the Chaz Chop. Zone? Chop now. Chop? I Chop. thought it was the Chaz Zone. It was, but now it's the Chop Zone. That's so, great. Isn't it great? So you're talking about lawlessness. They think they can do it better. You're talking about people who are not very well educated. They certainly do not know what the Declaration of Independence means. They certainly do not know how this country was uh, formed, the history of this country, and why those statues all over the country are there. Now, just remember the one statement, history is bound to repeat itself. The reason history repeats itself is because nobody ever listens or learns from history. And... That's what's going to happen in the United States. Unfortunately, it's going to be the right versus the left this time. And the right usually sides with, with reason and law, lawfulness. The left sides totally against that. And look in the Bible. I can't remember the verse, um, the exact verse of what it says, but it, it does say the difference between the right and the left. And the left is obviously dealing with half a brain when you're dealing with somebody like Joe Biden who has such a hard time completing a sentence and everybody cannot, on the right, can't understand why the left is going to put this man in office because he's not going to run the country. He has never won when he's run for uh, the presidency. I heard he couldn't even win his own state. And this is going to be a very, very crucial election. People, you've heard that being said. Look, you may not like Trump. You may not like what he stands for or how he says things. He is crass. He can be crude and rude. And you can call him whatever he wants. But he never claimed to be a politician. His biggest mistakes were do donating to any presidential election so he could get favors. But the man is a really good businessman. If you can't agree with that, then you have no idea what, you, what you're even thinking. You don't get to be in that kind of position without knowing what you're doing about business. And that's the thing that needs to be done in this country. The United States of America needs to be run as a business. Before the coronavirus, which really ruined everything that 
the country had come back from. The lowest unemployment among everybody. The economy was doing great. And then all of a sudden we get the coronavirus. And it really took the economy out. Now, the other thing is, in my belief, we should never have closed the economy down. You could have done things a little differently. And I believe if everybody would have worn masks and do some kind of social distancing. In Connecticut, we are back to opening up most of the state. Stores are open. I've finally gotten a haircut after 15 weeks. Um, All right. Things are much, much better in Connecticut. I think we have the lowest um, deaths and, cor- and coronavirus in the country because we did everything right. Now, if you're looking in Florida and you're looking Arizona, I don't know if, it, if California is one of them as well. You are seeing outbursts and of coronavirus now because they are not in Oklahoma as well. They're not um, social distancing. So it's uh, it's bound to have more and more incidences of of coronavirus. Now I just want to go. If people need to be a little smarter. Um, this outburst is from uh, kids, it's from young adults, it's from, and as I said, people who are not very well educated. They don't know the Constitution. They don't know how this uh, country was founded, and they really do need to learn. I have no problem with taking down Columbus statues. First of all, the man never set foot in this country. That's not what people put him up on statues for is how he, what he represented for discovering the new world and he was down south of the United States. Um, I don't really care about the Columbus statues. I do care about Washington and Jefferson and Roosevelt that, and I don't know if everybody knows that it's a, it's a federal offense to try to take down a statue that's on federal property. I hope everyone who is involved in the violence and the looting and the defacing gets arrested. I hope they, they're put in jail. I hope they serve their time and they realize that was pretty stupid of me to do that. Unfortunately, in the great city of New London, and I use that term very, very loosely, nobody is getting arrested for the defacing of that statue. Um, those people were facing possibly up to a year in prison. And the, and the mayor just kowtowed. We have such weak government in New London. Gov- uh, and if you look at most of the cities where all this violence is happening, it's in blue state areas. What do I mean by blue state areas so you don't know out there? Those are Democrats. And I, I call them their Democrats because <laughs> these people don't care all they want is to take away your rights they want power and i would like everybody to look up a name on the internet you go google damani d-e-m-o-n-i felder f-e-l-d-e-r he is black he is very well spoken he is definitely not on the left and he tries to educate Everyone, especially the blacks, how stupid they have been by following the Democrats and continuing to follow the Democrats. Just to let you know, which I knew beforehand, before I listened to Devani Felder, is the first black slave that came to the United States in the 1600s was sold to the quote-unquote white man by a black man in Africa. A lot of the black, who, who do you think owned the property in, in Africa way, way back? It wasn't, wasn't the white man, it was blacks. Blacks were selling blacks to people uh, on the ships, bringing them to the United States, which was not the United States back then. And the Democrats are the ones in the South that wanted to keep slavery. The North did not want slavery. And 
people just don't want to learn their history. You have okay. a caller. We have a caller? All right. Can we put it through? It's in. Hi, you're on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hey, Dennis, how are you doing? Uh, I'm recouping. I'm recouping. Yeah. Under the doctor's knives. Good. You're walking you're around? For, if you're looking for a new experience in pain, I, I got the perfect solution for you. What? Just go to the hospital, get underneath some doctor's knife, and have at it. So, Eric, I hear you talking a little bit. I had a lot of time to think of things while I was in the hospital. Um, you know, one of my basic questions with all this Black Lives Matter and all this, it's not like this is new. We've been down this road before. And we came to the same conclusion then that we have now, which is pretty much nothing. Um, so can somebody, anybody out there, your listeners, any black man, black woman, uh, white man, white woman, um, Puerto Rican man, Puerto Rican woman, and so forth and so on, can any of them tell me exactly what do they want that's going to stop all this? You know, Dennis, I have a video that Keith's going to put on, and it's, I think it's just a couple of minutes, but it's, it's a woman who is asking three basic questions, and... Keith, can we get that on now? Yeah, with him on the phone, he won't be able to hear it. Um, hopefully you'll be able to hear this, Dennis. I think I also sent it to you. So, I think um, you did. I'll, I'll watch that at, a, at another time. Okay, I want, I want, to, really I want to get show. this on. So, Dennis, stay on the phone, and I'm going to put, have Keith put this on. Okay, go ahead, Keith. All righty. So. Three questions for the Black Lives Matter protesters, a protest movement that's sweeping the globe. My questions are this. Number one, why do black lives matter more when a white person is involved? Why is it that during the weekend prior to the death of George Floyd, 10 individuals were shot down, murdered in Chicago at the hands of other black individuals, but nothing was said? And yet when a white person was involved, there are protests all over the globe. There was a gentleman shot trying to protect a store from looters and rioters. He was shot dead where he stood, lay bleeding out on the sidewalk, and no one seemed to care. Why do black lives matter more when a white person is involved? My second question is what is it you're actually asking for? What do you want and why do you want it? You can say black lives matter. You can shout systemic racism. You can give me all the sort of repeated platitudes, but none of them are actually telling me what you want. If racism is so systemic, did it only start since Trump was in power? Is it only systemic for four or five years? Or does it happen in Obama's time? If so, where were you then? What is it you're asking for? If I asked 10 of you, I'd get 10 different answers. And finally, of course, many BAME individuals have been demanding the release of a report into coronavirus deaths. Four times the amount of BAME individuals are impacted or have died because of coronavirus. So if you were part of that, demanding that report, hashtag you clap for me now, worrying about deaths of BAME individuals, how is it you're now out protesting in your thousands, stood next to each other, rioting, looting, without a mask, no social distancing? Either you did care before or you didn't. Either your Democrat mayors wanted you locked down for your safety, or actually now they're applauding you riot. Maybe there wasn't a problem in the first place. Why is it if BAME deaths are higher, now, today, you don't care about that anymore? Three simple questions, and I'm not expecting an answer to any of them anytime soon. Okay. Okay. So hopefully enough of you saw this. And Dennis, did you get to see it? No. No? I couldn't get it on the computer fast enough. Oh, okay, fine. But do, could you hear it? Yeah, it was really jumbo. Okay. Um, they are asking the same question. You, she was asking the same question that you were just answering, asking, what do they want? And I don't understand. Like you have said, Dennis, we, we've been through this before. It's not like we're not going to go through this again. We can't give them reparations for slaves. That, that would be utterly stupid, considering there isn't anyone alive today who was a slave. And reparations for what? 
You're going to give reparations to their ancestors who were slaves? That's what was going on back then. And if we give reparations to them, then you've got to give reparations to the Chinese who were brought in to build the railroads. You've got to give reparations to the Jews for the Holocaust. It goes on and on and on. And it, it's not just the blacks. So we can't, we've pumped how much money we've pumped into the education system. And I've heard from I don't know how many people, how much more money are we supposed to give these people for education when you're talking about women who continue to have babies out of wedlock with the men having multiple childbirths and, and they walk away. Uh, and honestly, this is predominantly black people, not whites. There, I'm sure there are plenty of whites. Um, and it's also a lot of white women who are, who are having interrelations with, with blacks that there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not arguing that at all. But because there's a lot of uh, white women who are having multiple babies as well, and they're just doing it to get more welfare so they don't have to go to work, which is pretty d- disgusting in itself. And the only w- term I can have for them is a whore. But you're talking about men who are not there for their kids. You need, I have a, a neighbor next door to me and she's not black yeah, and, she, and she's she's not even, here. she's not even, she can't bring up her kid properly because she's not have to stay, no, she's in debt up to her eyelids and she's, I can't see how she's going to be able to get out of it. She's behind on a mortgage, behind on her credit cards and stuff and I really feel bad for her but she, she has not stood up to her, her son and she's single and the ex-husband doesn't give her anything so, it's tough. What do you want to say, Dennis? No, what I, what I want to say is to tell, you, tell the people that may be listening and to spread the word, before you go down this road of uh, Black Lives Matter, of um, getting out, out on the highway and get in front of a semi-truck that may or may not take your legs off, um, and, and who are you going to have to help you once that happens, um, or somebody, you attack your car, and, you know, and it's just a guy and his wife, and, and they have a couple kids, and they're scared shitless and they got a gun in the car, and the only thing they can think of is saving their family, so they stop pulling the trigger. Then you have three or four people drop outside of the car. Um, if you look into the whole thing about slavery from, from the beginning, the very beginning, it's a whole different world. It's nothing compared to what they're trying to preach now. I've been checking into this a lot. I'm going to check into it even more. Slavery came about out of a necessity. It came about not just white people making black people slaves. It was everybody being made slaves, depending on what country they came from, depending on what that country needed. Um, In Africa, you had tribes that they needed weapons to protect their their villages. And you had a boat from Portugal, Portugal, ladies and gentlemen, not, not Portland, Connecticut, but Portugal, that needed equipment to protect itself. So what did they do? They go in, they raid a village, they take the women and the kids, and then they take the men and the ones that aren't able to survive, they kill them off, and then they sell the rest off for gunpowder, uh, guns, um, whatever else they may need. And now they got guns, and then they also have, you know, some of these people became uh, warriors for these tribes because they wanted to stay alive. So, so you, you look at all that as you talk about uh, slaves and stuff. And it's not this cut and dry thing that, that's being pushed on everybody. You folks out there, I've I got to wake up. You've got to really look into what this is all about. There can't be no retribution, however you say it. Um, because it, it would go out so far. I mean, it, it, it's not enough money to take care of that. And why should somebody that's um, never worked a job in their life, who has no intentions of wanting to work, all of a sudden be given all kinds of money because, well, I think somebody in my past, because they were the same color as me, um, that they're gonna get some money. No, no, you're not gonna get any money. Because if that's the case, the Italians were slaves. The, the Polacks were slaves. Um, the Irish were big slaves. Um, so I want some money. Who's gonna give me my money? I wanna take it from black people. How about that? You give me money. And then one, another other thing I wanna talk about real quick here. As far as the uh, statutes go, now, it seems like 
whenever a statue is offensive to one group of people, it's got to be torn down. Um, what does that really accomplish, folks? I mean, do you feel better when you wake up the next morning? I mean, do you feel like the world is cleaner? Uh, do you feel like you can you can open your eyes and, and the colors you'll see are will be brilliant colors and stuff? No, it doesn't mean squat. All it means is you tore down a statue. Well, let me tell you something. Jesse Jackson, Reverend Shopton, Farrah Khan, um, and whoever else I can think of, except for Martin Luther King. He's not in the same bracket. But the ones I mentioned before him, they offend me tremendously. They, they, they make me so angry. I want them statues gone. I want them taken down. I want our mayor in New London, and I want our governor in Connecticut, and the city council in London, that any statues whatsoever that have to do with any of those people I just mentioned, except, again, except for Martin Luther King, um, I want them. I want them taken down. I want the pictures taken out of the state houses. Um, I want them taken out of um, any kind of liberty halls they may be in or whatever. I want them taken all down because it offends me. So, uh, what do you think is going to happen? You think they're going to take them down? No. No. no Why not, aren't they going to take them down, Eric? You know, I, Dennis, we've been living in New London for too long. I can't. I've told so many people I cannot wait to get out of New London. New London is run by first-class idiots. <laughs> and things are not going to change. It's been run like this for so long, especially since the uh, 1960s when they took property by eminent domain and changed everything and brought in that all they wanted was uh, low income housing. They knew they can get a bunch of federal dollars here and they brought in a lot of uh, low income uh, people and people and, and you're talking about generations now of people who don't do anything for a living. They sit on their butts, get paid welfare, and because we don't have a government who's got any kind of guts to take all this away and but force these scary. people back to work. I don't. You know what Trump did? He canceled the uh, green cards for the rest of the year, and he should force all the people who are on welfare to go into your towns and you have to give them a job and if it means giving you a, a broom and you've got to clean the streets and you've got to co collect the papers off the uh, and clean up, uh, off the roads, clean up your town. But there's one problem with that. They, won't give a fel they will not give a felon a job. So what about all the guys that come out of jail that have felonies who are trying to be in reintegrate into society? Yeah. They don't have a chance. No, you're right. And what, what about that? I, you know what? If there's, truly, there's this, if they that's have that's are truly, very, there's this revolving door that just never stops. It goes in circles right. and circles, and it never stops. Because hold people, on, people don't trust our, our, felons. They don't trust people who've come out of, out of prison. So you can't trust someone who's made a mistake. Uh, yes, I can. I'm not saying I can't. I would look if I had a, a business that I could that I run and I needed help. I would hire more them before I would hire. Some, there's you know, there's a people. lot of felons that have come out of jail that have learned their lesson, and um, they're not given another yeah. chance. And they end up they end up on welfare. They end up not being able to get a job because the system has locked them out of society permanently. Do you know why is it they're locked out of society personally? Because of permanently. For every person that's not working is somebody that's working to help keep them not working. Somebody's working and making money off of somebody else's problems. As far as the, the prisoners go, um, they, they get out of jail or whatever, give them a chance. The way our system you know, is, the way our system is right now, is our problem. Yeah, because it nobody, is our problem. Because yeah. nobody gives them that chance they yeah. need. Do you, do you remember the movie The Shawshank Redemption? Yes, I do. The old man that came out and was working and he ended up hanging himself he he was so used to staying in jail he he couldn't live otherwise because he was oh years some, and years some of and them years. are institutionalized that's, that's right so you know what i think we should we should have jobs for for people coming out of prison or people who really want a job they should be able to go to Look, the town and say right, okay right. we're, we're going to give you a job listen to me for a minute okay you have people who say there's jobs out there that americans won't do all right, you got these people coming out of jail who can't get a job, but there's jobs out there that people won't do. You give them them jobs to do, and when they show that they can handle them jobs and they're able to move up, you move them up. That's Simple right. That. 
not a big freaking deal. We always want to make things ten times worse than what they are. It's, yeah. it's not that hard to do. Dennis, but the problem get all the people that are making money out of the way. The problem also is these the the jobs that are out there. Most people feel, well, that's below me. I could do something different. Yeah, but you're not. Well, sit back and you're not. You're sitting on your butt, and you're ripping off the system, the taxpayers, and they don't care. They just love getting all that money for nothing. Well, that, that's going to all end. They're, they're not going to be getting all this money. That, that's going to stop. Then what? You're going to, well, I need some I'm money. I'm hoping it does stop at the end of July. Uh, man, I tell you, sometimes, folks... The problem you're looking for, the answer to, is right in the center of your hand, and you can't even see it. They don't want to. They don't want to. All right, guys, that's what hang you on, know. What I'll be coming back soon. I hope you do, Dennis. I missed you. Alrighty, guys. Later. All right. Take care. Bye, Dennis. Bye. You know, the, 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 po- folks. The thing is that I'm I'm glad that Trump canceled the green cards because it's going to limit. I know people. A lot of businesses out there rely on the. Um, Southern border uh, or countries, Latin America, for these people to come in and work in in the uh, uh, hotels and a lot of all the all these um, th- these companies. You know what? They should these companies now should be forced to hire Americans. The problem also, and, and the problem also is, is the companies themselves because they don't want to pay. They can pay lower wages to these to these people, and they're more than happy to have anything. What does it tell you about those people, the honest ones coming up here from the border? It t- shows you that they're willing to work hard, and for subpay, even if they do send a lot of money back and to, to make something of themselves. What does it say about the Americans who don't want to do anything, and there are plenty of them right here in New London? Who just sit around and walk around and do nothing and expect this, that, and everything? Deal drugs. Deal. Well, yeah, deal drugs. Collect. Yeah. Collect their four or five hundred dollars a month in uh, in uh, uh, EBT or what do you call it? Oh, the, the uh, food yeah, stamps. They food collect. Stamps. They well, collect their EBT. You're right. Three, four hundred dollars in food stamps, and they're out there peddling drugs. It's 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 disgusting. How, and you want? I think I think if you're caught selling drugs, you shouldn't be allowed to have food stamps. That you should be permanently banned from it. If 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 you're if you're collecting food stamps and you're selling drugs and they catch you with thousands of dollars of drug money, that they should you should be banned from yeah. receiving food stamps. You're not gonna like what I'm gonna say next. What's that? Because I have a few. How's are- that for a, revolving door? Yeah, a, a few areas which murders, rapists, uh, pedophiles, um, it goes uh, drug dealers that have been the cause for deaths I don't think that I think they should be given the death penalty I honestly these people are bad people who do not want to live by society rules and look what's happening now and I just you know you get rid of the bad people you know right. uh, why is the good people get die young but um, I don't think someone like that's dealing pot should be sentenced to death no, or not, be, no. be uh, no you I'm know, talking about drug cartels and and the people that come up here the, to sell the, the, those drugs to dealers and the dealers the are heavy getting drugs things like that. It's you know, I, I had one time when I was in college that I was give I couldn't pass the test if my life depended on it. I was a lousy student, and I had tests coming up, two tests, and I said, you know what? I'm going to fail one or I'm going to fail both. And somebody gave me some speed back then, and I tried it, and it was terrible. I was racing, and everybody in in school knew that I was on something. And I said, never again. I decided, you know what, it's easier to stay up till 1 o'clock at night studying and get up at 4 and study some more and work harder and and, and get through school. And I... Drugs don't work. I mean, and then you see, I'm, I know you've seen a lot of people with drug situations oh, and yeah. stuff. So things have to change. The Black Lives Matter, you know what somebody brought up? Um, and again, Damani Felder, go look it up. He just says so much about the black people that they're so, 
for some reason, emboldened by the Democratic Party. And you want to know something? It's not just blacks. It's Jews as well. And don't tell me I can't talk about Jews. I'm a Jew, so d- don't worry about it. Um, why do we always vote for these people? Look at, the, look at the entire map. I saw a map of the United States on one of the um, uh, TV shows. The entire country was red. Those were, that's Republicans. And the ones that were blue, they were specks. It was, and some big specks, especially in California, New York, the big cities, Chicago. Those are the Democrat areas. So all these cities that are run by Democrats are doing lousy, especially New York City being run by a really idiot governor and a bigger idiot mayor of New York City. So... You and now you've got a a, a congresswoman, Alexandria uh, Ocasio Cortez, who is probably one of the dumbest women on earth. And you people keep are you going to vote for this idiot again? She screwed you two years ago, and is you're going to let her screw you again if you put her back in? Then you've got um, Minnesota with Omar, who is not an American. She was brought here by the previous president. Somalia is one of the worst countries in the world. He brought 20,000 Somalians here to Minnesota, and look what happened. Look, look at Minnesota today. It, all, and look at these big cities. They're crapshoots. How come you can look in Japan, who lost the war, and their, their country is thriving? Their country is beautiful. And look at Detroit. Detroit's a pigsty. <laughs> San Francisco's a pigsty. James so, McDonald. M- James McDonald says it's all lies, media manipulation. Fact is, per police encounters, whites are killed at a far higher rate. This is all anti-Trump propaganda. And thank you. And it's since day one, actually before day one, for some god awful reason. They hate Trump. It's because he's not a politician. If you want to, if you want to call in, I say the call. number. The number is right above my head. Look, see, eight six zero six two six five one nine three. Be more than happy call to talk that with number. you. Call, uh, send uh, messages. That's fine. We we would love it. Um, what was I just saying? All right. How many people know that you, when you saw that video that I put on, the lady was saying 10 shoots, uh, uh, deaths in, in Chicago? I don't know what weekend that was, but if you look it up, this past weekend, there were 120 uh, call, uh, shootings. I think there were 16 deaths. And it's black on black. Now, how come they're not reporting that? CNN, MSNBC, because they are so far to the left and the, ma- the lame street media. They're so far that they will only want to do it if a white kills a black man. Oh, but when a black man kills a white person or a cop or a black man kills another black uh, man who happens to be a sheriff, they don't want to report that? That shows you how dishonest these people are. How do you how do you live with yourself in a city that does not want to have follow the rule of law? If you think you are going to have more cities like Seattle which has been that three now it's it went from six from what I understand six blocks to three blocks now, and they've been fighting among themselves now. I guarantee you, people, we're getting tired of it. We're getting very tired of it and of listening to all this BS. It's time to get bring the uh, rule of law back. There was a video of a sheriff in Louisiana who went on for, I think it was eight minutes, and he was saying in his town that it's not going to happen here, and he ended up getting fired from his job. Well, he's a congressman in in Louisiana now, so he can make the rules now. So we need more right-wingers 
who are going to be more, or let's just say conservative people, who are going to have the laws work, not people like Obama and Susan Rice, um, Comey and um, Hillary Clinton, um, Obama's attorney general, Eric Holder. They're all crooks. They're all should be in jail. They committed crimes. Fast and Furious was a crime, and Holder should have been held accountable for that. Susan Rice should be in jail for what she, as Attorney uh, General, I think it was, uh, under Obama. It goes on and on and on, and it's just that the left doesn't want to listen to it. They don't want to know, listen to what the truth is, and they know what the truth is. And I'm hoping... I am praying before this election is is held that if some of these people are brought up for justice and go to jail, maybe the other people, the uh, Democrats and all the lefties will finally realize we did, we really did this country wrong because it's of the people, for the people, and by the people. It's not of the Democrats, for the Democrats, and by the Democrats. So it's, it just keeps going on and on, and we've got to stop this. Um, I want to bring up a couple of things that <clears throat> I heard about and which I think would be a great idea, and this is especially for Black Lives Matter. Why don't you people start your own political party? Instead of Democrats, instead of Greens, instead of Republicans, conservatives, let's have a Black Lives Matter political party. And you start running for office. I think that would be great for the blacks. There are a lot of black legislators today. And no thanks to what Lincoln did to free the slaves because the blacks prevented the newly elected senators and congressmen from taking office. These were Democrats people, not Republicans, not Federalists or anything like that. These were Democrats. All they care about is policy and power. They want to make more power. They want to open the borders. Do you realize what's going to happen if the borders are open? This country is gone. It just, it's going to go on and on. So I think the Black Lives Matter uh, people ought to start their own political party. I think that would be serve the country well. If you think you're so damn smart and you know everything, run for office. See how hard it is. Then one other situation that was brought up to me, well, that I heard, was in the uh, regarding Brett Favre. He was asked the question, do you think Colin Kaepernick should be voted into the Hall of Fame? And it was interesting how Brett Favre just walked around this. But I got, get the feeling he said he wouldn't have a problem with that. The reason I would have a problem with it is the Hall of Fame is for the elites, the people who have really done the sport well who have um, performed well, and Colin, Colin Kaepernick was not that person. He, I think he won a Super Bowl, big deal, but he wasn't a great quarterback. He was at a time, the right time at the right place. And now that Roger Goodell has said he made a mistake that people should be able to kneel, Roger Goodell is, is just a, a turncoat. He's, he, in my mind now, is scum. The flag does not represent, let's put it this way, the flag represents the people who gave their lives for this country. And they deserve to have people stand up, salute the flag, and respect the flag for this con that this country and the people were given their freedom for. Not to be kneeled on and spit on and trampled on and I will never, 
ever kneel during the flag. I don't care if people want to come up to me and they say they're going, they're going to force me. You can't force me. It doesn't work like that. You can't tell me I think black lives matter more than my wife or my children or my parents when they, well, they're, they're passed away. But any other people I feel, Jews, Hispanics, Chinese, Asian, more Asians, Europeans, I agree black lives matter. But so do all the They're teaching communism. They're teaching that the United States is bad. Well, if things are so bad, why are these professors getting paid so much money, which was is capitalistic? Why has all the money that's being paid to anybody today, and you notice all these sports figures, how about NBA? How about NFL? <clears throat> And the, and the Major League Baseball. You're talking millions and millions of dollars. This isn't socialism. It's capitalism. But did, did Obama ever say anything like that? No. Obama's got $100 million from capitalism. Oh, but all he says is you didn't earn that. You didn't create that. Look at the lies this man has said. He's a Pied Piper and you're following him. And if he jumped off a cliff, you jump off with him. Please, Obama, jump off the cliff. Because I can't stand you. I don't hate you because I don't know you. I just don't like you very much. And you're a hypocrite. You bought a $15 million piece of property on Martha's Vineyard. And you've already said that, according to climate change, it was going to be flooded. <laughs> what a hypocrite you are. And your mm-hmm. wife gets up when you get elected and said, for the first time in my life, I'm proud to be an American. Ladies what and gentlemen. a hypocrite. Our transmission just got interrupted. I don't know why. But uh, this is something that Facebook likes to do when you're talking about things they don't like. Don't like you, Facebook? Then cut us off completely so we know to go to another another uh, 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 platform. So we're done? No, we're, we're still live. We're live. Okay. No, we just, during your, you might want to go back and recap about what you said uh, about uh, 30 seconds earlier, but... Uh, we got disrupted by Facebook. Really? Yes. That's interesting. Yes. Facebook likes to interrupt things they don't like. This is one of the downsides about broadcasting on Facebook. Wait. Facebook is very dirty about political and opinions and stuff like that. Very, very dirty. But I also heard, I don't know if you heard, I read We, on we might start doing this show live on, on YouTube. Okay. Because I'm, I'm sick of Facebook. Well... I know, every that, t- I know that there are a lot of companies that I read that are taking away their ads from Facebook. Yeah, because they're they're censoring people. And you know what? This is supposed to... You know what? Sell your stock in Facebook. Let's see. Show them that the, the, the dollar is, is more important to them than, than free speech. You're going to have that taken away from you if you don't... If you continue to do what you're doing. So I think next week we're going to broadcast live on YouTube and see if the broadcast gets interrupted. Okay, that's fine. And then me. we'll share the video from YouTube over to Facebook. Oh, but you can't play versa. video on YouTube. Okay. You can't what? Can't play video inside a video on YouTube. They'll oh. pull it. No, 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 no. We'll just broadcast live on YouTube instead and share it over to Facebook. I would but, like uh, to um... shame shame on you, Facebook. Yes. Shame on you. Shame. I've got the... Uh, Unless we had just had an internet glitch. Oh, I, well, we'll see what happens. Anyway, I've got the opinion page from Monday from our less than stellar newspaper of the day. And there is a... Uh, I'm going to use his name very lightly because he is such a leftist. And he is... He took over uh, a gentleman who I also wouldn't call a gentleman. His name was Steven Slosberg, who wrote terrible, terrible editorials. He, de- he really defamed a lot of people. And then this David Collins took over. And then there's this letter today who says, when Collins needs a topic, he knocks the GOP. And this is typical for David Collins. He is so left. He, 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 he just can't stand Trump. And I've got friends like that too, but... Excuse me. They can't say why. So, 
Um, whenever David Collins needs a column, he blames Donald Trump and the Republicans. Lazy is easy regarding expanded absentee voting. Um, he claims Republicans want to suppress the vote. You know, Republicans don't want to suppress the vote. Republicans want a fair election. And I happen to, to think that you need to go to the polls and vote in person and not vote by, by mail, except for the ones who have to, like having health problems. Now, the reason why a lot of people don't want to go to the polls is because they don't have the right identification. And in today's world, there is something very, very warring with you if you do not have a photo ID. You can't drive without a photo ID. You can't get on a plane without a photo ID. You can't go uh, a lot of things. You have to have a photo ID. And I think that's what you should have to do in order to vote. And there's going to be a lot of fraud where Collins doesn't think so, which I do. If, if you don't go to vote and you, you have a write-in ballots or, or, or mail-in ballots, who's... How do you know who's actually voting? You don't. All these people that have been allowed to get um, draw, uh, have to get driver's licenses in the United States. How do you know they're getting insurance? How do you know um, if, if that they're legal? There's so much crime and illegality that this is wrong can't why can't people see this it, it's just wrong it goes on um, in this uh, the columns blames Republicans next time anyone sees oh, Len Fasano who is a Republican in, in Connecticut they might ask the senator for one example of fraud he suggests exists with absentee voting um there, again, there's an, there was an editorial on so many questions about Black Lives Matter movement. Um, there, I like the one thing I happen to like about the day on, uh, I believe it's Sunday, because they ask uh, online feedback, and some of the readers of the day ask a New London Council votes to make Columbus removal permanent. Now, the, the council was supposed to ask the voters, and this is why. New London, one of the big reasons why it doesn't matter who gets voted into New London, it's run by idiots. And that would be New London, Connecticut, because right. you might have viewers from oh, anywhere in the world right now. Oh, by the way, I've been to New London, New Hampshire. It is a lot nicer than New London, Connecticut. So one uh, reader wrote, okay, so we have removed Columbus. I cannot wait to see what the statue offense, offensive is next. Since private money paid to put the statue in place and public money paid to remove it, here are the next steps. In reality, the council and the mayor should pay out of their own pockets for the removal. However, they will mm. not. They didn't ask for taxpayer dollars to, pay, to take this out, which is a good point. Well, John Winthrop is next, and people need to look up John Winthrop in for Connecticut. What did that, that statue Minnesota have to do with anything? It doesn't have anything to the do with The Christopher Col uh, Columbus statue. They spray painted it red, and then they demanded that uh, it be removed by the city. And Supposedly, our, he had something to do with slavery. And and oh yeah, it's you know. And what, now they're calling for Washington's statue to be removed because Washington was a slave owner. Uh, hello. So was Lincoln. And, and no, Lincoln was not a slave owner. Um, Thomas Jefferson was, and he even slept with one of his slaves and, and had children by by that woman the point being that was back in the 1700s that's not today that's what would happen back then you can't blame or say i feel so oppressed because of what what washington did you don't have any idea what Washington did if you said that. He's the father of this country. He fought for this country. What have you done? All you people have done is, I want more welfare. I need food stamps because I don't want to go to work. You're a lazy SOB. 
another. Um, but yet the people who work their ass off that right. need to help that are, say you work for a company that doesn't give you the hours you need or the pay you need, and you need to be subsidized because of that. Right. And There's, you get penalized. Yeah. Um, and then if you get married, you get penalized. Marriage is, is, is formidable. Don't get married. If if you are working, if you or your fiance or your wife. wife are working a job that you need subsidization because you're not getting enough of money, don't get married. Because you're going to They'll knock yeah. you down by hundreds, yeah. hundreds of dollars. Well, how about, how about the women who are living with all their kids? Oh, let me show my face. Here I am. And... They're Hi, not everybody. To, they're, they're not allowed to have the, the 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 fathers in the house because I mean, or they've separated it because it would hurt their welfare checks. There, how many people out there who are getting big welfare checks have their boyfriends or ex-husbands still living with them, well, and you're lying about it? This goes on here, over and over Because and over. here's a fact in Connecticut. We're, we're broadcasting live from New London, Connecticut. I'd like to thank all the viewers from Drain the Swamp. There's 25,000 people in there that could be, could be watching right now. Um, thank you, guys. And the uh, number is right up there, right above my head. You can call in and voice your opinion. I just hope... If you... Let us know if you... you if don't you are a couple... Let us know if you like the show. If you are a couple... And you get married, they slash your food stamps down to minuscule amounts. Kind Doesn't like, matter I think if it's like eighty percent. Even if your other half is not is disabled and not working, you still get penalized. You still get penalized, but yet, I know some people out there who show up at the uh, DSS office with fifty thousand dollar rims. And ninety thousand dollars car stereo systems that rattle a whole neighborhood. And they get all kinds of food stamps. And they're getting all their food stamps. It should be, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. It is. And people, yeah, and the honest ones, us, me, Keith, Dennis, Melissa, all these, all the other people out there who work hard for a living, we can't do anything about it because the government doesn't want to do anything about it. And it's, it's getting disgusting. And this is why Trump has continued to state, drain the swamp. Can you imagine what would happen if all these politicians were gone and they cut the pensions from these politicians? And, and basically, they need to cut the salaries because they don't, need, they don't work 365 days a year or the 52 weeks, they get more vacation than anybody else, and they get more benefits than anybody else. And what do you people do? Karen Merle says, a friend of mine did, and then she also said, what about the ones that sell them for drugs? Bingo. Oh, they sell their food stamps for drugs. Bingo. How do they? Because I, they I, take I, them I, to places that accept it well, and pay 50 cents on the dollar. Melissa, turn up your mic. You know, Melissa, the um, what they've done also is... Um, because there's technically no food stamps, it's EBT cards, that they go up to these people and say, look, I need some cash. What do you need me to buy you at, at, the, uh, at the store? You pay me in cash, and I'll get on my EBT card. That's the way they get their drugs. And they do it at 50 cents a dollar. Uh, 50 cents on the dollar. Any, any way to screw the hardworking taxpayer. Karen. The number is right up above my head, 860-626-5193. Anybody who wants to voice their opinion without having to type it in, 860-626-5193. I know we're going over time, but no, you might get we some saw callers. A little bit, and we're, just, we're only going to go a few more minutes. Um, also in that paper today, uh, on Monday, from the day, there, Lincoln still speaks to a nation still divided. And in... This editorial is by Richard Lathrop. Who Before was, you go on to the editorial, a comment. Karen Morrill says, uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, I have been approached many times. They offer to buy you so much for food and you get one half the price. Like I said, 50 cents on the dollar. 
Thank you, Karen. Appreciate you, Karen. your comments. Karen, you can also call in the numbers above our head, too, if you want to call in. and This editorial by Richard Lathrop. Now, Richard Lathrop was born in New London. Richard Lathrop is a lifelong educator. His work taking him to several states, he retired to his hometown. Now, also in this editorial, which is great, is the Gettysburg Address. And for the people who, who don't know what the Gettysburg Address is, Lincoln read the, uh, wrote the four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth to this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the preposition that proposition that all men are created equal. Now, the one thing he, which, remember, this was back in 1863, on November 19th. He should have, which wasn't done back then, but it should have said that all men and women are created equal. It doesn't say that all white men or are created equal or all black men are created equal. It says all men are created equal. And I think if you can go on the day.com and go into the editorial area and get a copy of this, or you know what? Go online and Google the Gettysburg Address. Eric, wasn't that when women didn't have rights? When who? Women didn't no, have rights. No, they didn't have the right. They didn't get the they right to vote, vote until... I, they couldn't do anything. No, well, yeah, they could have babies. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so, and, oh, I have one one more thing before really we, we go off. I want to ask um, black men and women a question. If, if black lives matter so much, then why weren't, won't you paint Black Lives Matter in front of all the Planned Parenthoods? There are more. They haven't good, touched them. They haven't touched them. More babies have been aborted. Black babies have been aborted than anybody, than anyone else in the country. And if you care a black, about blacks so much, go paint on the street in front of the Planned Parenthood. Not black on the Lives building. Matter. Not in the building. Don't, don't commit violence and stuff like that. The, the government, if we get the right person and get the right people in government, we will defund Planned Parenthood. Let them take care of people, not um, perform abortions. If the Black Lives Matter so much, stop having so many abortions. Stop killing people in Chicago, black on black. The worst city in the country for violence. What do I have to keep telling you week after week? It's almost the same things. There are different things, of course, we'd like to talk about. And I would love to talk about the good stuff in, in, in the country. But you don't see that right now. Wear your mask, social distance, care about everybody else, and not just yourselves. Maybe we can finally get along as a country, but with the way things are going right now, I'm not, not going to hold my happen. breath. So until next week, Keith, I'm going to sign off, all right? And thank you for listening. Tell your friends. Go on to your, uh, in your Facebook, United FM Radio, hyphen in my opinion, and you can see past shows as well. Thank you very much, and we will see you next week. Good evening.